Welcome again to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. In this lecture, I start with our most fundamental topic, the discrete Fourier transform. If you can follow and understand this topic, you should have no problem in following the whole course. I divided the topic into two lectures, so this is the, the first one. We will start with the discrete Fourier transform equation and then explain the two basic components of the equation what are the complex exponentials and the scalar product. So this is it. This is the most important equation to be shown in the whole course, so pay attention. In the equation you can see x of n, which is our input signal, our a series of uh, samples of a sound, that is multiplied by a complex exponential, thus a complex sinusoid and we multiply sample by sample. So we have one sample of our uh, sound and we multiply it by one sample of the complex sinusoid. And then we sum over capital N, which is the number of samples we uh, compute. And then as a result, we obtain capital X of K, which is our spectrum. Okay, and uh, the index k refers to the frequency index. So we have capital N frequencies, the output, uh, which is the result of computing capital N samples of the input. Okay, so N is our discrete time index, k is our discrete frequency index, and then if we want to understand the, these uh, frequencies as radian frequencies, we have to uh, multiply k by 2 pi and divide by n, which is our exponent in the complex exponential. And then if we want to convert this to a frequency in hertz, uh, if we have the k index divided by capital N and we multiply by the sampling rate, we obtain the frequency in hertz. Um, okay, so let's uh, see an example. Uh, the, our x of n uh, is this uh, top plot, which is uh, uh, in this case a series of samples of an oboe sound. And then when we compute the DFT, we obtain this complex function, capital X, that can be expressed in polar coordinates, can be expressed with a magnitude and a phase. But let's first hear the sound. Okay, so this is uh, the oboe sound and the spectrum, we can uh, see uh, the magnitude and the phase and in the magnitude we can identify the harmonics of these sounds. So these peaks that we see basically reflect the uh, harmonics of this oboe sound which is clearly a very harmonic sound. And in the phase spectrum, we can see basically the phase, how these sinusoids are placed within uh, the, the sort of the cycle uh, length and with respect in radians with respect to the, the duration of uh, these uh, series of samples. As we said, in the DFT equation, the input signal x is multiplied by a series of complex exponentials, complex sine waves. These sine waves are the basis functions of the DFT, the components that we will identify and measure in the input signal. So one of these complex sine waves is S of k, uh, in which uh, we, we using Euler's identity we can express it as a complex exponential e to the minus j 2 pi k n divided by capital N, and this is equal to the cosine of the same value minus j sine of this uh, same frequency, so the real and imaginary part of this complex exponential. If we have a DFT of size n equal 4, we will have n samples uh, in the input signal and therefore in the sine waves, and we will have four frequencies. That's going to be also the output of the DFT. Therefore, we will have four sine waves of length 4, 
one will be at frequency zero f s uh, sub zero which will be basically the frequency equal to zero and it will be all equal ones then s sub one will be the uh, frequency one and that will be one cycle of a complex sine wave uh, s two will be uh, frequency k equal two and s sub three will be k equal um, three so a signal of size n equal 4 will be projected into these four sine waves which each one being of size 4. If the signal has uh, size n equal 8 we will need 8 sine waves like these ones. So here we have the 8 complex sine waves starting with s sub 0 with uh, this uh, DC component all being a constant s sub 1 which will have this one period of a sine and of a cosine and we will keep increasing uh, the number of, uh, of periods but as you can see there is kind of some symmetry and uh, the, the frequency doesn't go up to uh, 8 uh, periods but it really goes back to the one period. We will talk about that but these are basically the 8 complex sine waves that are used when we take a DFT of size 8. Okay, so the DFT equation can also be expressed by this equation, which emphasizes the idea of scalar product, uh, in which we are uh, doing the scalar product of x of n, our input signal, by the n complex exponentials. And if we put an example of, we take uh, again size n equal 4 and we take a signal of uh, being these four samples 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1 and we do the scalar product of this signal by every one of the four sine waves that we uh, had computed in, the, in uh, the previous slides we will compute the DFT result so when we do the scalar product of x by s sub 0, the result will be 0. That will mean that this particular signal has no uh, frequency uh, 0, is not present. And then if we change to s sub 1 and we do the scalar product, we get the same result, 0, which again means that this uh, frequency is not present in the, this uh, x signal. But when we change to s sub 2 and we do the scalar product, the result is 4, which means that basically this x signal is this uh, sinusoid, is completely present in this, uh, in this sinusoid. And we get the result of 4, which is the sum of all the samples. And then by s uh, sub 3, again, is uh, equal to uh, 0. So that means that we have computed the DFT of x of n, and we have obtained that is equal to 4 for k equal to 2, and is equal to 0 for the rest, meaning that we have the presence of the frequency k equal to 2. Let's do that with a, a bigger signal. So this is an example of the scalar operation of a simple signal that has all ones, it has um, uh, eight uh, samples, the first four are ones and the last four are minus ones. So this would be like a uh, rectangular uh, kind of uh, uh, signal. If we compute the DFT or the scalar product uh, between this X signal and the eight complex sine waves that we had seen in the, the previous slides, the result will be uh, this one. We'll get the, the magnitude and the phase, so it's going to be a complex uh, spectrum and we can uh, display it as polar coordinates. And here we can see that in this, uh, this signal there is uh, some frequencies present. The frequency k equals zero is not present frequency k equal 1 is very much present, but it also present k equals 3, and is also present k equal 5, 
and again is also present k equals 7. And the phases mean how these um, sine waves are located in uh, sort of in the time location. So this is uh, the DFT operation and basically this is going to be the core of all the things we will be doing. You can find uh, more information on the DFT in Wikipedia and uh, of course in the website of uh, Julia Smith. Uh, and from on, now on, uh, on all our lectures we will use uh, some sound, so all will come from uh, free sound and they can be obtained from this link. And again, uh, the standard uh, Creative Commons and, uh, and uh, uh, GPL uh, licensing of the code that we'll be using. So we have shown and explained the DFE equation. I hope you realize uh, that is not such a complex thing. But even if you feel it is complex, its use in audio signal processing is huge. So it is worth spending some time with it. We will continue with the DFT in the second part of this lecture. So thank you for your attention and I see you next class.